if I could distill this sermon down into one sentence, well, you would have already heard the, the first part of it. You don't need a fishing license. The second part goes like this. Because God's already given you all of the credentials that you need. We all have credentials. That driver's license I mentioned earlier, a high school or a, a college diploma, an ID badge for work, years of experience in a, a certain profession. But when you get right down to it, credentials are all about knowing the right people and cultivating relationships within a community. Even the root of the word backs this up. Credential comes from the Latin word credo, which means I believe. It's the same word that we get creed from. So credentials are a way of saying that I believe in that person or that group. They're okay because I know them and you know me. Reminds me of an old family story. The year was 1967, and my father and grandparents had just moved from Creston, Iowa, to just outside of Washington, D.C., and some of my dad's cousins were coming by for a visit. Well, they wanted to go visit the White House, naturally, and so my grandmother made arrangements to get tickets for the early morning tour. Now, normally, these are the tickets that you would have to call a, a congressman or a senator to get admittance to this early morning tour. But instead of calling one of them, she called the chief usher of the White House. J. Bernard West was his name. J.B., he supervised all of the non-political staff at the White House, and he happened to be from, wouldn't you know, just outside of Creston, Iowa. He'd grown up with my grandparents, and so he just added the Allen family to the list of admittees that day with his name behind it. Now, the day of the tour arrived, and Grandpa was running a bit late like normal, so he decided that he would drop everyone off right in front of the front gate at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. While they were getting out of the car, a guard came up to them and said, you can't stop here. My grandfather said, well, I'm just letting people out for the tour. I'm going to come park the car and, and come back. The guard wasn't having any of it, so he said, what's your name? Merwin Allen. At that point, he checked his list, and when he saw that they were guests of JB, he said, hold on, I'll stop traffic. You back up and park in the driveway. Moments later, the gate to the White House was opened, and my grandfather backed his 1965 Chevy Bel Air up the driveway. You know, they made the tour on time that day, all because they had the right credentials, or maybe more appropriately, because they knew the right man with the right credentials. Today's gospel picks up right after Jesus' baptism by John and his temptation in the wilderness for 40 days. For the third time in four chapters, Jesus is forced to depart from Judea, which was the logical place for the Messiah to come from. First, Jesus had to leave to flee to Egypt then he was driven out into the wilderness, and now he's in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, otherwise known to us as Galilee. For the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the fact that Jesus was not living in Judea was just one more reason why he couldn't be the Messiah, because he didn't seem to have the right geographic credential. But Matthew Matthew points to Isaiah and says, look, Jesus is fulfilling the prophets. So, of course, he's the one. Of course, he's the Messiah. 
And that's where the adventure begins. As Jesus starts walking around the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, he encounters individuals who might otherwise be deemed unworthy to be the Messiah's followers. Fishermen like Simon and Andrew and James and John, they were not the type of people that the Messiah should be associating with. They were sinners. They were the ones who needed to repent in order to just make it into the kingdom of God. And yet, by the grace of God, they were the faithful ones. It kind of gives you hope for all of us sinners here today. By the grace of God, Jesus came to them and said, follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. And from that point on, they're in relationship with Jesus. And over the coming chapters, that relationship with Jesus grows and he shares with them the power that comes from his messianic credentials. You see, it's all about Jesus and all about his credentials. That's basically what Paul was saying in the letter to the Corinthians we heard for our second lesson today. It's not about me or Peter or Apollos. It's about Christ, Paul says, and the salvation that comes through his cross. Nothing else can build up or save a Christian community. When we forget that, divisions are bound to erupt among us. And if we aren't careful, those divisions can undermine any Christian community. They can keep us from following Jesus' call. But you know, the opposite is also true. When we follow Jesus, we learn to trust him as our leader and that he gives us what we need in order to follow all the credentials we might want to go out and fish for people. There's a story about a young woman who was filling out an application for college when she came across the question, are you a leader? Well, she thought about it and she decided that she would be best served to answer honestly. So she wrote, no. But as soon as she sent in her application, she thought, well, I'll probably never hear from them again. But a few weeks later, she received a letter back from that college that read, we've reviewed numerous applications and to date, there will be some 1,452 new leaders at this school next year. We've decided to accept your application because we feel it imperative that there be at least one follower. <laughs> Today, Jesus says, come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Following Jesus and fishing for people is about continuing the work and ministry the work and ministry of Jesus as a primary focus in our lives. And Matthew summarizes that mission quite well in the final verse of today's gospel reading. He says, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. That's it. That's what we're supposed to be about as the church, proclaiming the reign of God and bringing healing and wholeness to all people. Both mean engaging the powers of the world that will stand in the way of God's love. Both mean working for reconciliation in the midst of a world filled with divisiveness, brokenness, and injustice. Both mean casting the net of God's love so wide that it can encompass everyone, even those the world says we should shun, even those who might make us feel uncomfortable, and even those who might hate us. Sometimes we can feel ill-equipped and underqualified to be sent out to do such work. But we have the grace of God poured out upon us in baptism 
and we receive it anew each week at Christ's table. Sometimes it can be downright frightening to leave the security of our nets and the comfort of our small little boat of church folk. But we have the call of Christ and we have the gift of God's Holy Spirit helping us each step of the way. If we didn't have those credentials, it'd be pointless to even try. But because we do, because we have Christ calling us to his side, we have all the credentials we need, all the credentials we need to proclaim the love of God for all. Amen.